Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306. Sorry about the uh, hand-holding camera situation, but uh, it's uh, partly necessary. So yeah, I've been um, wanting to do this for a little while. I was pretty lucky enough to get this Game Boy Light with the original battery cover, but I mean tons of these battery covers are missing um, if you go on eBay and buy a second-hand one. Oftentimes um, the units are very scratched, damaged, and are you know, missing entirely the battery cover. So I thought, well, you know, that'd be great and all if they had replacement ones. Uh, but unfortunately, as far as I know, they don't. Uh, and I was talking with my friend Elliot, and he'd found um, a guy who 3D prints his own and sells them for something ridiculous, like 15 or 20 bucks. So I figured, uh, why not 3D model one? and um, see if I can design my own and then um, I can just release this online on uh, Thingiverse or something like that for free. Uh, since, you know, this is something that is very niche. I, I don't really care about making money off of this. I, I just wanted this for the practice of designing one of these, making it, and then just getting it out there because I thought that'd be pretty cool. So here's uh, SolidWorks right now. And um, you can see the the 3D render of the model, and so I can go through very quickly and explain how I did this. To get the the shapes, I've used just a, a vernier uh, caliper, um, measuring the actual battery cover just to see everything, you know, in terms of the dimensionality of it. And additionally, I didn't really know what the curvature was, and I don't have a way of figuring out in order to get these humps right. So I just took some uh, AA batteries and I measured the diameter to find kind of the the um, the radii that I need to use in order to generate these curvatures you can see here so if we go through step by step first thing I drew was the side profile including these two humps and sort of this uh, just this one side and this was a two-dimensional uh, figure which I extruded then uh, to the final length of the actual um, object after that I had to obviously cut out the inside here so I uh, drew a square and I just extruded up um, a set distance based off of measurements I took from the original unit. So we're getting pretty close now, but you can see that there's gaps um, on either side. So the next step I took was to draw a, a shape to actually fill that in on one side and then the other. I, I feel I have to make a small disclaimer here. This is actually my third project I've ever uh, you know, designed in CAD. So I'm sure that there are plenty of more efficient ways that I could have done this, but this was the only way that I really knew how. So it, it, it's a work in progress, and this is sort of my way of learning. So the next step is um, I added some fillets along the top here uh, just so that I can get kind of a more rounded feeling uh, similar to the original battery cover. And I added that for both sides. And finally, I added the uh, beginning of the tabs for the battery latch and here so if I can open my here's the original uh, battery door so you can see I'm starting to build now uh, these little arms that come off um, that actually stick into the Game Boy and keep the the battery door from sliding out and so um, I added these features that stick up and then finally uh, I added a little bit of fillet so that when you insert the door, it doesn't tend to stick. And I did likewise for the other side as well. And then I extruded the arm piece that actually sticks out that goes into the body of the Game Boy to hold the door in place, sort of like a hinge. I added that for each side. And then finally I started uh, drawing the door. So I extruded outwards a box shape um, downwards from the main body. And then I drew sort of a side profile of this sort of a V shape. And um, this material ideally would be kind of springy so that you could press, pull the tab in. There'd be a tab here. You'd pull it in just like the original battery. You can pull this slightly inwards and it would release the catch. Um, I added a little bit of a fillet to round this side so it doesn't catch on anything. And I extruded... 
This, I, I don't believe it's necessary. I mean, in the original battery door, they have it here, I guess, to remove material to make this less stiff. So I figured that it'd be a good idea to try to model this one by one, and then I can add or remove material to, to fit uh, the material properties of, you know, PLA or ABS that I'm using to print this in. And I extended the cut here to the exact measurements of the actual battery door. I added the little flange on the outside that, that kind of holds the door in flush with the outer case. And I added a little bit of a, a upwards cut um, to try to match the original. Finally, I added these two little prongs. And the purpose of these prongs, is they actually click into the body. They're um, rectangular in shape there, you can see. Or not rectangular, they're triangular in shape, sorry. And so when you insert it, it sort of clicks in um, and then holds it in. So you have to press this tab inwards in order to pull it out. And here you can see I just made a triangle cut um, all the way through to both sides in order to create this um, this tab shape so that it, if you press the tab, it'll click in and then it'll hold it in until you press the tab again and you can remove this uh, lid. Finally, there are some internal structures I've seen on the inside to add support to the sidewalls. And I kind of fudged up here. So there's actually, it's, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's actually asymmetrical uh, because the way that this goes into the Game Boy, the battery bay is asymmetrical. You can see this side is longer than this side. I actually fudged up in this model and I made the longer side the wrong side so it wouldn't actually fit. I actually had to cut those off uh, once I 3D printed it and I tried to fit it, it didn't fit. So I realized that was blocking. There's some plastic in the way, so I had to cut them off. But in the final version, I'm going to correct the lengths. And here I just add a chamfer just to, you know, make it look nicer. And I do the same thing for the other side. You can see this side would be longer than this side here. And I added a chamfer to that as well. So all I have to do is go in here and change these extrude um, widths, basically. And then it'll, it'll be correct. That's an easy fix. And then finally... Uh, the original door actually juts inwards at the side here, I guess um, so that it doesn't uh, go right to the edge, either edge of these, so that it's a little bit easier to grab with your fingernail. And so I did the same thing as well. Oopsie. <laughs> but yeah, so you can see here that everything is uh, pretty much good to go. Um, all the features have been replicated. This is a one-to-one -one scale, so this is based off of measurements, but I kind of made a beginner's mistake, unfortunately. I forgot to add tolerance. So I can show you right now, um, here. Uh, you can see the original door obviously fits quite well. Uh, there's a little bit of slop for tolerance so that um, it doesn't scrape on the plastic or anything. And you can see there's little hinges uh, that I mentioned before. And to open it, you have to get your fingernail kind of under that and then push a little bit. Uh, similarly, on mine, I actually uh, broke off the tabs accidentally. They're very thin, so I might have to either print this in a, a stronger material or uh, figure out a way of adding a little bit more support to the bottom to keep the tabs from breaking off so easily. Anyway, you could imagine it would go in like this and it would fit like this. Uh, but you can see already it's quite a bit wider than what I actually measured. So there's one of the two things that could be happening here. I don't think it's a tolerance issue per se. I think that maybe my calibration on my 3D printer is wrong. For instance, if I tell it to print 10 millimeters, it might actually be printing like 11 or 12. So I might have to scale back the model either to compensate or more ideally to actually fix the calibration on my printer so that it prints to the exact scale of whatever I tell it to. Additionally, I printed this in PLA, which is a rather rigid material. So, and additionally, I had to print it with lots of support. So it's pretty rough on the bottom. I printed it uh, face down like this on the bed, so it has, had to support all these empty areas um, like this. If I printed it sideways, I probably would have gotten a lot less wasted material because it would only have to support uh, this cavity here and then a little bit for the tabs. But this is such a weird geometry, I might actually have to slice this model uh, to slice the pegs off and this latch mechanism off so I can print it flat and then 
uh, print the other features separately and then have the user glue them on with like uh, super glue or something like that at the end. You can see the tab is really weak um, because when I printed it, I, I think there's another issue with my Z height. It was actually too low. So it doesn't have as much material on the bottom as it would need to be sturdy. And additionally, from me playing with it, I kind of broke some of the material. So you can see it's really floppy. PLA isn't a very good material to print stuff that needs to flex. Uh, second time when I go to reprint this, I'm going to print this in ABS, which is much better at handling uh, moving parts, basically. It's a lot, uh, not really stronger of a material, but more durable, I would say. It, it can take flexing a lot better. And so those are like the three main things that I need to fix, as well as, you know, these uh, sidewall tabs here. I need to fix the dimensions, swap them out, because as I was saying, you can see it's not symmetrical. The batteries actually sit a little bit more to the right, and there's more free space here. So the larger tab should be on this side, as opposed to this side, which I got it backwards. But anyway, yeah, so this was just a uh, quick video, uh, I guess, 11 minute long video. I wanted to show you guys uh, my learning process on how to design something like this and go through step by step and, and show you all. So yeah, um, I've always been kind of a little bit, well, not really scared, but uh, there's quite a bit of a learning curve for CAD software. So it was a little bit intimidating, but I got some help from a, a couple of my friends and some online tutorials and just playing around has helped immensely. So yeah, if you guys are uh, interested in uh, learning CAD software, it's definitely doable. I'm not, you know, the greatest, uh, uh, you know, software user in the world. Um, it took me a little while to be able to get to this point. But yeah, you can see by just adding basic geometric shapes and extruding them and working on different faces, you can get a pretty complex shape here. So yeah, that's uh, pretty awesome. So if you guys like the video, um, you know, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask down below. Um, I'll be posting, once I finish this, I have to make some corrections, reprint this, and make sure that it works, basically. Then I'll be releasing this on Thingiverse, and I'll be uh, linking down below in the description when that's uh, completed. So if you guys have a Game Boy Light and you want to print out a battery cover for it, I'll have that all perfectly available for you guys. So yeah, until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.